God of War has always uh, benefited from the beauty, the depth of the lore and the myth that it is based on. And now you guys, I don't want to say you reset everything, but you kind of have this whole new palette to paint with, right? Because you're in a new kind of mythos, a new lore of the world. Yeah, I mean, it's it's massive too. Like uh, the weird thing about Norse mythology is it has so many different translations, so many different interpretations that it's this very tangled web when you start researching it and trying to understand. And then as God of War has done in the previous games, we sort of find our inroad. Ways that we can kind of parallel path things that are going on and feel like we've injected ourselves into a little bit of that history. So there is a, a, a story about this stonemason who has a bad run in with Thor uh, and ends up getting a chisel knocked in his head. And that actually turns out to be a, a level that we're going to visit in the game. Tell me a little bit about the research. A lot of it is the initial research. You know, everybody on the writing team was reading the prose eddas and uh, really starting to research how the myths were translated, how they kind of spread out and are told, as well as then the art team. We had a large group of people go out to Iceland, which we had some really cool experiences with them out there. So they went there for an art research trip, and then we actually uh, rented this church to actually record some of the soundtrack in. Oh, Unbelievable, man. it's so good. And both times, all I got to do was see it on like a little monitor. The designers must have had such a fun time, like kind of breathing new life into a very familiar and very iconic world yeah. like God of War. Yeah, it's, uh, the artists all kind of talk about like, this is the type of game that they really want to work on. And I think you can really see that throughout all of the team. Everybody really gets uh, a tremendous amount of freedom to create in these worlds. It's not just like creating the, hey, I'm creating a, a building that you've seen before. This is all like the blend between the fantastic and the real and finding that sort of level of grounding as a launch pad to go into something that's just crazy. These are the, the toys the, from E3 2016. This uh, black runestone is a, is a key artifact in the game, kind of a, a, a main story point, that right there is the, the journal that, that Atreus carries around with him. So at that time, books were not really uh, uh, used. They did not have bound books. So this was an unusual thing that in, in this world. And this is kind of uh, the, the way that we link all of our UI together. So you're going into his journal. Through his journal. Yeah, and it's a really neat way because you're kind of getting this insight into Atreus a little bit because it's in his voice. These are the, the, the various knives that uh, they have, so Kratos' knife and the mother's knife. You know, the, these are kind of things that you pass on, right, uh, in, in your family. So the idea of, uh, in the E3 thing, it was like your mother's knife, this is yours. That, that passing on of the knife is that sort of rite of passage for him, this idea that he is going to begin a new phase of his life. Every single part of this world has a story. Every single part of this world connects to sort of the core theme of family and, and fathers and sons and, and mothers and sons. Like everything all connects to it. Brock and Sindri have a complicated family relationship that you affect, that you change, right? And they're the guys who are just like upgrading your equipment. And you know, like I, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything about this game that didn't feel like it was just rich with the lore. Is the father-son relationship just completely central to, to this experience, would you oh, say? Yeah. That was the, 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 the core building block, right? Like that's where all of this began. It began with that idea of like, all right, he is a character that everybody feels they knows very well, right? That, that oh, Kratos is the sort of one note vengeance man. Uh, and we needed a reason, I think, for him to change or desire to change, right? And I, I had my son, and there was a shift in me that I want to actually be a better person in some ways. A bit more patient, right? Uh, and it's a constant struggle, a journey, just like the journey that he has, right? The early years of uh, Atreus and Kratos' relationship, when uh, his mother was alive, you know, she spent most Which of the time... Potentially this figure here? This figure is the, the, the mother, and... Uh, you know, and again, lazily, uh, as a writer, I'm pulling so much from my own life is that, you know, I spend a lot of time at work, so my son spends a lot of time with my wife. Uh, and, you know, in, in some small way, this is a reflection, although Kratos really is struggling 
with figuring out how to relate to his son, right? Because he carries a tremendous amount of baggage being responsible for, spoilers, the death of his previous family. So I think he feels, as any child would, that his dad doesn't like him. And Kratos just doesn't understand how to relate to him yet. He knows he needs to figure it out, but it's always that thing he's going to do someday in the future, right? Yeah. And then combine that with the fact that he doesn't know that he's a god, but he's experiencing all these bizarre things, right? Which he sort of has to internalize because no one's talking about any of those things. So it's definitely a, a, a very heavy weight for him to bear. This is kind of one of the starting emotional and narrative starting points yeah. to the story, right? This is Kratos' house. So this is basically standing right out front of Kratos' modest home. And the whole game is filled with all these little details of like uh, right here, this is kind of a, 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 a Norse blessing to kind of protect those who live in the house. So runes and sort of the written language and the spoken language are kind of the, the power of this world. So they use it to, like the tattoos that uh, Atreus has all over are kind of like steady mind. He has that tattooed on the back. Uh, and then, you know, strength and, and, and uh, precision for his sort of bow draw arm. So it's kind of a neat uh, way to fold in this sort of language into the world. The sun's ability to contrast what Kratos' abilities are, brute strength and, and power, and the sun's ability is, I have intelligence, right? I have the ability to understand others. So much so that he actually can hear uh, the, the sort of feelings and thoughts of other creatures. So that he has this sort of empathetic angle to him as well. It's fantastic. Chris Judge, uh, our Kratos, put it the best in an interview I was doing at PSX, I think. Uh, when he said, uh, how can you father w if you've never been fathered yourself, right? And it's like Kratos' complex past of having, you know, Zeus as a dad uh, and, and having his dad try to kill him really kind of damaged his ability to understand what fatherhood really should be. And I mean, Zeus obviously had his own psychological cross to bear because his dad tried to eat him. So really, like mythology is wonderful. Pre-order and get three shield skins for in-game. PlayStation.